Okay, now let's move on to the third question. alternative approaches to analyzing aircraft forces and dynamics. So, so far we use the force-based approach. That only works well so long as the separate forces can easily be identified. So works so long as thrust and drag, for example. Uh, can be clearly separated. We need an alternative for aircraft configurations where that separation just isn't, isn't possible. So the solution in this kind of case is to use a energy-based approach. So as an example of an aircraft, for which this kind of approach wouldn't really work. We have something like this, which is an aircraft that, that we saw in the first lecture. Now here, you can see that the propulsion system is not in the traditional place. On a traditional airplane, the engines would be out here on the wings. But here, they're located at the rear of the aircraft, just on top of the fuselage. Now, that poses several problems for the design of the aircraft. For the, that poses several problems for the analysis of thrust and drag. Because here, the propulsion system is ingesting air from the boundary layer on top of the fuselage. Um, boundary layer. So in that case, it isn't really possible to separate the drag on the fuselage and the thrust that's being generated. If 
I were to draw a side view of this aircraft, notionally, it might look something like this. Here's the propulsion system. This aircraft moving forward at the infinity. And if we put a control volume around the entire aircraft, look at the engines. We want to look at this entire thing, and the question we're really interested in when we talk about thrust and drag, really what we want to know is how much power is required to maintain steady level flight at the infinity. So, if we think about power, power is dissipated by friction. And power is generated by the propulsion system. So if we write a simple energy balance for the control volume, we can write d e of the airplane by dt is simply generated power minus the dissipated power. So in steady level flight, the kinetic and potential energy of the airplane are constant. So we can simplify this to say that the generated power must equal the dissipated power. So this is general this is a general statement even for aircraft that don't have this kind of advanced configuration. Um, it's just that it's possible to think of it on the force level when the thrust and drag are distinct. But really, this is always what matters. So what happens if we try to apply this kind of analysis to a traditional aircraft? So we have our aircraft, tail, wings, the propulsion system. We have the thrust F, moving at a velocity V infinity, and the drag D. So remember power is work over time. So that's force times distance over time. So power is just force times velocity. As we discussed earlier for the steady climbing flight case. So the generated power W dot gen is the thrust 
times flight velocity. And the dissipated power w dot this is the drag times the flight velocity. And then, of course, since we have w dot gen equals w dot dissipated, that tells us that v infinity times the thrust equals v infinity times the drag. We can cancel out the velocities and just we get thrust equals drag as before.